Smoking is an unhealthy habit, but it's one that millions of people struggle with every single day. However, you may be surprised to learn that actually nicotine is the cigarette's most harmful substance when it comes to hair loss. In this video, I'll be teaching you more about the connection between nicotine and hair issues such as thinning and balding. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create science-backed YouTube videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow your hair. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. Nicotine is a substance found naturally in the nightshade family of plants, including tomatoes and aubergine. However, tobacco is one of the largest sources of nicotine with about 0.6 to 3% of nicotine making up tobacco's dry weight. Let's have a look at the health risks of nicotine. We've known for decades that nicotine is a harmful substance. However, only in more recent years has its full ill effects been studied and better understood. Here's a closer look at the health risks of nicotine and how they relate to potential hair loss. The first point is that nicotine increases blood pressure. Blood pressure is, as it sounds, the pressure level of your body's blood as it travels throughout the circulatory system. One risk of nicotine use is the increase in blood pressure that it produces. With blood pressure levels increased, your blood vessels become constricted. This can mean that the delivery of vital nutrients and oxygen is decreased and your non-essential body parts, including your hair, won't receive what they need. As a result, high blood pressure can indirectly lead to hair fall by decreasing the nutrients and oxygen that make their way to the hair follicle. If left untreated, this can lead to permanent balding as hair follicles will soon die with insufficient oxygen. The second point is that it decreases oxygen. Nicotine isn't the only substance inhaled when smoking. Another is carbon monoxide and it directly decreases the amount of oxygen circulating throughout your body. Oxygen actually plays an important role in hair follicle health. So not only does smoking make it more difficult for oxygen to be delivered to the scalp, but there's also generally less to start with. One of the main factors in androgenetic alopecia is the presence of DHT, a hormone that is naturally produced and often causes no harmful effects. However, people with androgenetic alopecia have hair follicles which are sensitive to this hormone. When it attaches to the follicles, this leads to hair miniaturization. DHT is produced when testosterone, the male sex hormone, and 5-alpha reductase, an enzyme, interact. However, oxygen is also necessary for this interaction, but it doesn't require much of it. DHT can easily be produced in low oxygen environments. Increasing oxygen levels will lead to the production of less DHT. How? Because another byproduct, estradiol, can come from the interaction between testosterone and 5-alpha reductase. However, it requires more oxygen than DHT does. This means that increasing oxygen levels in the scalp will lower DHT levels and increase estradiol levels. This is great news for hair loss sufferers in two ways. First, less DHT means less follicle miniaturization. Second, more estradiol can mean more hair growth. As such, you can take a two-pronged approach to fighting hair loss just by simply increasing oxygen levels in the scalp. The next point is that nicotine ages the skin. Aging is a normal process and it's one that is caused by a number of factors. Free radicals are essentially incomplete atoms. To complete themselves, they steal electrons from surrounding molecules such as those in the skin and hair. As the molecules are broken down by the radicals, the surrounding structures have difficulty supporting themselves. This is what leads to aging, both premature and natural, and is a known cause of age-related hair loss. The next point is that nicotine may lower immunity. While the majority of hair loss sufferers are diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia, which is a non-immune form of thinning and balding, immunity is still important when it comes to staying healthy. And this is similar when speaking of scalp and hair health. Nicotine has actually been shown to slow and stop the cell cycle. As such, this can lead to a reduction in T cell production. T cells are one of the body's main defenses against foreign body attacks, including bacteria and fungus. Now, with a lowered immunity, bacterial and fungal infections find it much easier to take hold. Such infections, including dandruff and ringworm, can
can then lead to increased hair loss. Will using nicotine lead to immediate and reversible hair loss? No. However, prolonged use can certainly contribute to the poor health and, as a result, hair thinning and balding. What about vaping? With the advent of e-cigarettes, vaping has become a popular friend among smokers. After all, it's a much safer alternative to cigarettes, right? Unfortunately, vaping is not as safe as e-cigarette companies would have you believe. In fact, the use of e-cigarettes comes with its own side effects, including a condition known as popcorn lung. Health risks aside though, can the nicotine within e-cigarettes also lead to hair loss? Well, potentially. Nicotine, no matter how it's used, is a substance that's harmful to the body. Let's have a look at how to combat nicotine-related hair loss. I was a smoker myself for many years. The way I gave up was using a book called Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking. I couldn't recommend it enough and it's absolutely brilliant and it's worked for numerous people. Another thing you could do is meditation and deep breathing. With oxygen levels decreased and blood pressure increased, the flow of oxygen throughout your body is severely limited. You can boost these levels with meditation and or deep breathing. Meditation and deep breathing have a number of benefits for the body, whether you're a smoker or not. And these include stress reduction and decreased carbon dioxide levels. Another great thing you can do is physical activity. Did you know that regular exercise, while it won't completely eliminate the health risks of smoking, can actually reduce your risk of cancer? A 2006 study found that moderate workouts more than four times per week or vigorous workouts more than two times per week reduce cancer risk by 35%. Of course, you'll want to start out small in order to slowly increase lung capacity. And for this, we recommend swimming or cycling. In addition, you'll need to stick with your routine. It's no secret that smoking is harmful to your health. However, cigarettes and their various substances, including nicotine, can be just as harmful to the health of your hair. While I absolutely advocate for quitting, I know that's not what most will want to hear. And while you can't eliminate all risks without quitting, you can combat nicotine-related hair loss with the previous tips. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on smoking and hair loss. Um, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.